Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on a very, very special 6 Plus Plus podcast episode. This is the inaugural episode of The Kids Table. I'm your host, Jack, here with the junior wing of the team to talk all things competitive in the world of Warhammer. This week on our first ever episode, we'll be talking about games you've had recently, talk about some of the hobby we've done, and maybe what we're thinking with the upcoming data slate we've just had. Uh, I'm joined by Joe. Uh, how are you doing, Joe? How's 40k for you been? Yeah, good. Thanks, Jack. Uh, I'm currently painting a sort of brand new army to myself uh, in the wake of the Custodes Codex, just to give myself sort of a, a fresh look at the hobby in the game, try something new. Yeah, that, how, you, how are you feeling about the Custodes book? Uh, I'm not going to lie, n- not hugely jazzed. Um, I've been doing what I can to make it work. Um, but I think it's it's a it's a big shake up for Custodes player. I'll say that. Yeah, it's uh, an interesting new approach to how you'd play the army, maybe. And I'm also here with Harley. How how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Um, yeah, all good. I'm literally trying to decide how to decrease Grey Knight lists by thirty points because that's how much they went up, and it's really awkward. Really awkward number. Have you tried cutting a tech marine out? I, d- I didn't even have tech marines. I had a Kalidus, and and the, it's just there's nothing I can do. Nothing works. You don't need a Kalidus. You teleport anyway. I know, but I like four teleportations instead of three. <laughs> but have, yeah. have you heard of a uh, Canoptic Core or a, a Necrons? They, I know they have some teleports. A couple yeah, of them. Yeah, I'll, I'll be staying far away from them. Not for me. And hopefully later in the show, we'll be joined by Connor, uh, he, one of the other members of 6++. Um, but just to start off, I thought we would sort of talk about our backgrounds, uh, how we got into 40k, how we got into the competitive scene. Um, and yeah, Harley, do you want to take us away? How, how did you get into 40k? Uh, well, at one point, I played 40k when I was uh, very young, and uh, it was a, a local shop. And it ended up shutting down, so I stopped playing 40k for a while. But then, I don't know, maybe three years ago, like when lockdown was ending, uh, I saw a mini wargaming episode pop up on my YouTube, and then I just started playing again. And I went back to Grey Knights, which was the army I finished off. And I was playing them, and then I was doing quite well, um, considering I had just started. So then I started doing events, and yeah, I just enjoyed them ever since I started, really, and just got on well with it. Do you remember your first event? What, what army? Well, you took Grey Knights. Do you yeah, how you it did? was Grey Knights. Uh, I went two and one, which, uh, I mean, it's okay. Uh, I lost to the winner, which was uh, helpful, getting 100 to 26, which was a good intro sounds, into competitive like quite Warhammer. well then yeah like i won two games and i was like yes and then lost to the winner 100 to 26 when he pulled up with 27 dark lances and i was like oh that's what shooting is but yeah, yeah. Um, that's how i got introduced that, yeah. by proper 40k competitive scene um and yeah that was painful do you, do you remember the list? Do you remember your, any models from the list? Um, I remember, actually, I have a Dread Knight here that was used in the list. Ooh, Baby Carrier. Nice. Um, yeah, it was some Dread Knights, some Inceptors, maybe a Land Raider. It was just some stuff that I had got off Facebook Market page for as cheap as possible, really. And that I didn't have to paint because I hate painting. And just i like playing really so yeah anything that was cheap and cheerful or facebook market page to be honest that, that was midnight edition then so was that before, yeah before, uh, that before the book but uh yeah so i started playing just before uh they got their book yeah like three months before they got their book and then i okay. found, yeah. found some good joy with their new book because their book in ninth was actually quite good when it first came out yes i remember that i was a. Uh not long not long before my first event actually which was uh lgt 2021 <laughs> it was um the day very similar to you marines and uh interceptors wasn't it yeah yes um, yeah, was, and six dread knights if you could fit them yeah um, it was five dread knights <laughs> two tech marines 30 interceptors that was that was pretty much the standard list 
Yeah, it's always there. nice to see fluffy lists doing well at the uh, top tables. Oh, yes, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at the time though, there was six Admech planes flying about, six Orc planes with twelve buggies, like three hundred Dark Lances. So the metal was horrible at that. One hundred and fifty Skitari as well. Just yeah, existing. Yeah, that, that that LGT you went was that the one where it was. Um, the final when it was Admet Malik versus, and yeah and it was over Alex so Harrison fun. yeah I, uh, I remember that well that was uh, that was it was literally like a, a thirty minute game final. wasn't it, it if yeah. that it was I think they literally they deployed Malik shot first. and then it was done you conceded yeah well they, they were yeah, having the conversation like as they were deploying basically whoever gets first turn wins yeah and then I think Malik killed f- like three redemptors and like a another dread turn one and then alex was like yeah good game because <laughs> alex was playing that, that would um, do it uh, it was death watch death yeah. it was it death watch he, he had the sikara yeah he had the sikara yeah. with the indirect piece on it which is r.i.p uh called the forge world uh very sad about it that uh. was another lgt filled with drama though that was maybe not as much as other years though yeah, there's a uh, LGT is always good. That LGT was my first event, as I mean, as you well know, Jack. Um, <laughs> it was it was a an eye opening event for me, um, for sure. Um, my intro to competitive 40k uh, that I didn't actually finish because I thought it'd be an incredible idea to go out drinking the, the night of the first day, uh, and I, I did not make it in for the second day. <laughs> Yeah, that would do it to you. Which is probably just as well because I probably would have lost my games anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a rough event. I again same first event for me. I similar to Harley played very young, stopped. Then Total Warhammer came out, played hundreds of hours on that. I was like, oh, this Warhammer thing, you know, I'm enjoying it. So I bought a box of Skinks, built three of them, dropped them, went and bought Space Marines. I was like, yeah, this is this is what we're after. Paint them as Dark Angels, and then hopped through a few armies and set on Death Guard for my first event. Um, yeah, it was good fun. Took Mortarian, coolest model on the table, loved it. Got slapped around by Grey Knights, slapped around by Orc Freebooters, obviously. Um, slapped around by Dark Angels, which is very sad. The uh, loads of Terminators just making nine inch charges oh, all over the place. The, do you remember yeah. that the the Dark Angel transhuman list? Oh. Yeah, it was it was a, a rough time to you know. It's fine. Be playing just roll Death fours, Guard. right? Just just roll fours. <laughs> it's yeah. I was running possessed. That did wound rerolls. I'm and that so just glad enough. transhuman is gone. I like the new the sort of new version of it. The minus one to wound if their strength yeah. is higher than your toughness. I think that works sort of as a good it, middle it, ground. It's, it's, it's a definitely much better does. way of doing it, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hundred percent. But, I mean, it sounds like you two are almost hobby veterans compared to me because I've always described myself as sort of being slightly new to the hobby um, in the sense that I didn't play at all or collect when I was younger. But it's not quite as true now considering I've been in the hobby for about five years. Um, but it, it's relative. It's all relative. Um, but I I remember as a kid, I'd, I'd used to go on the internet and I'd go on the... Um, the wiki and i'd read about 40k law and i was like this sounds awesome this sounds really really cool um one of the one of the things i read about a lot was uh sanguinius so when i got into the hobby i went straight for blood angels i mean it sort of suited me i'd say because i'm a i'm a diehard melee kind of guy um shootings for cowards if i can get up and punch it i will (laughs) And uh, how have your Blood Angels fared competitively? Uh, how, how many events have they been to? <laughs> so, uh, as you well know, uh, I'm not the best hobbyist um, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, my Blood Angels have been to exactly zero events. And that's because they're not painted. <laughs> they're the first army I started collecting, and I've taken them to zero events because they're not painted. Um, yeah. That's not great. In all fairness, though, I think before every event, I at least paint 20 to 40 models the night before. Like, Well, I used my first LGT as sort of like 
a motivator to get painted you know i took custodies um i would describe myself more as a custodies main nowadays um but they're really easy to paint i will admit it uh so they suited my lack of motivation quite well i'd say so your 12 models that you had to paint with basically and i was and i was gold. painting the night before yes you are right <laughs> We were working together to base them. You doing the rims, doing the texture paint. It was a, a nice production line going. Remember that? Yep. Uh, well, I uh, one event I had, I had to paint 80 Skitari Vanguard before the event. And I was sat there the night before painting these Skitari Vanguard up. And I was just basing, like, base coating them after i had sprayed them and i was passing them along to my girlfriend i was like base them base them she was sat there with basing them and i was like thank you so much what a girlfriend's for right <laughs> she doesn't even like war ammo that doesn't matter yeah. <laughs> i was like look it's very simple you get the big brush and you paint the base done well, if anything i'd say that's better because then she's got a vested interest in getting it done as quickly as possible yeah and then any marks on their capes or anything, I was like, yeah, it's just, um, it's meant to be there. It's dust they've kicked up. There yeah. You know. yeah. Their uh... tiny robot legs have kicked that much dust up. I think or anyone the, who spends... the hover tanks driving next to them. Yeah, yeah. You know. Anyone who spends time getting like 120 Skatari all up to parade ready, that kind of has my respect. I painted 20 right where i done highlighting everything like all of it and i was like You're yeah insane. they look really good started painting 10 more and i went nah this ain't for me spray base you're done spray base you're done next um, yeah i'm uh, always that's... looking for ways to cut corners i, I won't lie for, yeah i've uh, i've had to adapt my painting style for competitive events and i'm there quick three colors four colors about already done but um Obviously, Mr. we had a data slate a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Streaking Grime is, uh, it keeps my Night Lords look clean. It um, covers all my smudges where I'm doing the gold trim and I've just missed. But it's it's an absolute lifesaver. Be liquid skill, better than null oil. Uh, it's a word of advice. Obviously, I had a data slate a couple of weeks ago. Um, quite big changes for some of the armies. Uh, some not very big changes for other armies. Um, and also some books as well for a lot of what we play. And uh, I know Custody's got a book recently, Joe. Do you want to? How are you feeling about them? So we asked you a bit before, but yeah, I mean, I will say it's a nice looking book. Uh, not shilling at all. Um, sorry, what was the question? Just how are you feeling? Have you, had any, have you had any games with the book? I've had I've had a few games with the book. Uh, my first game, I gave Shield Host to go um, because I don't, I don't have the number of Sists of Science painted that I think you need to make Talons work. Um, it has some absolutely filthy damage output um, on your go turn. Um, it, it really is, in my opinion, a detachment that's sort of like it wants to break the back of your opponent's army in one turn, and then make your opponent go i don't really have enough to stay in this game um so ironically it's it's better into more like other elite armies so space marines i could see this sea shield host doing quite well in space marines but the game i played against i played against Drukari, our very own rob kimpton um and there's just no good answer for transports really um you, you can give your bolt gun sustained hits one, but it's not quite enough when your opponent can just hide behind a wall with his transport, dip out when he wants to engage, and just force you to take to take saves. Not enough multi-phase damage. And, and that's always been Custody's uh, problem, but I think Shield Host almost exacerbates that by not having the defensive aspect I mean, it used to be that you, with Custodes, you could layer about a million different defensive buffs and go, I'm going to be a massive problem for you. Um, when it comes to Shield Host, when it comes to Shield Host, your defense is rolling fours. 
Um, you, the only real defensive strat is Unwavering Sentinels, which gives you minus one to hit in the fight phase. But the, cr the key thing is you have to control the objective marker at the start of the fight phase. So if you've got someone who's charged onto it with, I don't know, 10 witches and Leather Hesperax, you're not going to control that. No way. Um, or, uh, I guess, looking at the current meta, 20 Orc Boys, that's or 20 orc a load boys. of OC. You're not going to control that. It's, Let's be I honest. Mean, who, who does combat? You know, like just shoot them. I know, right? That just works. shoot them. Um, I need to get I need to get more games in with talons. I've got some vigilators that I'm painting. Well, building at the moment. Um, but I think there's some there is some good stuff you can do with talons. Um, a layer gives you your only source of fights first still, um, and you've got a strat where you can force your opponent to shoot your custodies rather than the assistance of silence. So you slap a layer and 10 vigilators onto an objective. You go, you can't shoot these. And if you charge, they're going to make you pick up models. Um, okay. I mean, that sounds reasonable. That's uh, not a bad little combo there because the vigilators are the sword ones. They're yeah. quite good power swords, aren't they? They've got dev wounds. I mean, uh, I will not say no to the opportunity to take dev wounds uh, and I'm like you say sure but then you you're taking more fire on your custodies the the kind of things that you want to shoot at assists of science to kill them are not the kind of weapons that custodies are worried about it's going to be you know bolt guns yeah non-supercharged plasma that kind of thing the big guns were already going at the custodies it was just the little storm bolts and stuff that were going to go there exactly who shoots multi-melters at sisters of silence not me. I don't have any multi no. <laughs> Should play Death Guard. They're great. Auto wound on fives to hit. Well, I don't like Death Guard, but I do like Care Space Marines. Um, so to take, take a bit of heat off the Custodies, I am painting up some Iron Warriors with the advent of the, well, Care Space Marine book being on the horizon. So on my desk at the moment, I've got a a Chaos Doggo. Nice uh, I, will, I will say, painting trim might be the worst experience of my life. Uh, I never <laughs> want to do it again. And it's making me extremely bitter and resentful. So I guess I'm kind of staying on brand for Iron Warriors. <laughs> and, uh, have you have you had a, a look at the new rules? Any detachments you're interested in? Maybe, maybe when you get your army done? I think the... Uh, Soulforge pack looks incredibly spicy, hence the uh, Mall Fiend. Obviously, you've got the uh, strat that lets you run through walls. Uh, when you invoke your contract, you get extra attacks, so your Mall of Fiend is up to eight attacks with sustained, obviously. Um, I think it's got some really good damage output. Um, another one, I'm because of Iron Warriors, I'm tempted to try the Fellhammer Siege Force. Um, not as many direct like damage boosting abilities in that detachment, but it it's it's really one that you want to like out attrition your opponent. Yeah, it's very focused on durability with the uh, army rule, the stratagem yeah. support. You're uh, you're getting terminated um, quite well in it, maybe. Yeah, well, there's a strat where you get four, and for you roll, I think six dice for the enemy that fights you, and every four up is a mortal wound. Yeah, it's not Which bad is, for a CP. Just grenades, punishes right? your opponent for yeah, trying to do extra grenades. melee to you, right? Yeah. So that could be quite but, fun. To I, know, I know it's one I'm also looking at, obviously, as a CSM main. So you could grenades charge a tank when it fights you grenades again, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. That's, pre that's pretty good. <laughs> and I don't want to say... I don't want to say it's a battle tactic. Um, I will just double check based on the leaks it's that we've got. The feel uh, no pain is not a battle tactic. That's the one you're thinking of. But the feel no pain is a fantastic strategy. Just throw on anything, oh yeah. makes them better. <laughs> Five up feel no pain on terminators and shooting with new transhuman. You're going to struggle to pick, make you pick models up. All this ah, so it, new book epic, sounds exciting. So you can't do it. You can't do it for free. Sadly. 
FC, FC but, you mentioned you have um, you had a uh, Grey Knights. You mentioned Skitari. What other armies do you have, Harley? Are you looking at anything? Going I to have new... Eldar. Also, resent me. Ooh, my you, yes. you, you want everyone. <laughs> And, and yes, I did play three night spinners as well. So this guy. me even more. Um, I, my last event was with Eldar. I've been testing with them. They're in a bit of a hit and miss spot at the moment. They're, they're like, they're good, but they're not very forgiving. Cause like this, they're, they're so easy to kill. You overcommit a turn early, you're dead. You, like, you got to be very careful with them. So I, I don't know if I can be bothered to deal with that at the moment when I play 40k. So I've been enjoying Grey Knights before them and like Grey Knights didn't really get touched too much in the data slate apart from like 30 points, which I mean, I'm trying to come up with a good list that can just kill orcs because orcs and um, deal with most other things, hopefully. And orcs seeing are how that goes. The... They are the boogeyman at the moment, aren't they? They are the boogeyman, but maybe what I What do you can... think is the problem in Orcs? I've, I've had a brief look. I know people talk about Bully Boys. They talk about Horde. They talk about Dreadmob, which is three Everything. completely different profiles. Everything. Like, how do, you, how do you tech for that? Well, I think uh, Grey Knights uh, can do okay into Mega Knobs because, like, you just run away, hopefully. <laughs> just teleport. That's my hope. But I haven't tested it yet. Just don't don't play the same game as your opponent. Yeah, like I mean, ten paladins with like can survive a decent amount of a hit. So just try hold primary and run around and outscore. But that doesn't always happen. I mean that that's felt like Grey Knights the whole of tenth hold primary deny you run round score. That's literally Grey Knights since tenth. <laughs> Uh, I feel like the list has pretty good play into green tide because I feel like I can just mow down orcs. Uh, with... It's a lot of volume in Grey Knights. Yeah, uh, especially the list I've built. I've built it to kind of like be better at killing green side. So I, I've gone with four Dread Knights, which is I think is the number at the moment. Uh, Ten Paladins with a Grandmaster because um, they've got Strength 8, AP 1, 2 damage shooting, which is pretty good into boys. Side Cannons? Yeah, six Side Cannons in the unit. So it, it's pretty good into boys because it's twos to hit, threes to wound. And then I do, they got a five up save and what a five up feel no pain or something. So the two damage normally gets through the feel no pain, which is what's important. And then I'm trying out uh, Castellan Crow with um, ten purifiers because that is a lot of DACA and it's anti infantry two plus. Uh, AP one no cover. AP one ignore cover, but you three inch deep strike on top of the ruin and go here's plunging fire, a rule that never gets used till now. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that, that will uh I'm AP two. Yeah. It's like twenty had... shots hitting on threes, wounded on twos. So like it does yeah. yeah I think and then it's got four having... flamers in the unit. Having anti infantry in your army is gonna be quite important if you want to tech into Green Tide. Because mm. They they sort of they sort of have it all when it comes to the defensive profiles because they're what T five they've got five up in Vaughn. they have a five up feel no pain with the uh, what is it pain boy or something yeah um, yeah they they re-roll their saves of one so they're actually saving it better than a five up and it's eighty five points for ten models and they have multiple ways of counting as more than ten models. <laughs> to trigger yeah. all their extra buffs they get in that detachment yeah yeah it's, um, exactly i don't actually think i'd be looking at with uh, even though how good boys are in combat to be honest are they still ap1 in combat or can they i buff? think they're only strength four though Ooh. yeah they're not as strong and as they, they don't are have tough. sustained in that yeah. detachment not not base anyway i'd have yeah, to check so, um, so i think gray knights might have good play into green side because they just don't get through the the uh two plus save and like that like much like paladins are t5 dread knights are t8 like i just don't think they get through it and i get through them quicker than they get through me so that's the plan yeah. at least i haven't actually tested it yet i still need to test it but um that's can theory potentially auto see them as well with the terminator yeah bricks, yeah or so, 33 well, I, the I don't use the terminator brick in the list but paladin brick is 20 oc and i mean if you've got a whole paladin brick on the objective like no boys are really gonna get on it yeah 
And I mean, like Overwatch from Dread Knights is nasty. Dread Knights themselves are nasty because four Dread Knights is eight D6 flamer shots. So at strength six, I, AP one. So it's a horrible profile for my Death Guard. I'm uh, not, I, well, yeah. I've had okay success. I'm not looking forward to playing into Dread Knights to get more. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know with Death Guard, I, like into Grey Knights. It's a bit of a weird one because if they get into range, I'm dead. So, but I can just teleport and stay out of range. It's, yeah, uh, yeah that, that's Custody's Grey Knight matchup is has become quite interesting with the new Codex. Oh, I, I don't know. Isn't isn't you've lost your four up feel no pain right against? Well, yeah, but I don't know if you've seen the win rates from this weekend. Because um, the sh- towns of the Emperor, which get the feel no pain of a five up against psychic attacks, psychic attacks. And uh, mortal wounds is that like a fifty percent? Um, so grey knights come in. They, you know, grey knights have decent melee, but custodies obviously get five but feel no pain. But if you're running the um, dread nemesis dread knight spam with lots of uh, three damage ignores cover shooting, you can just stand as far away as you want, shoot, and That's how I've custodies felt just when can't interact. Custodes. Yeah, every time I play Custodes with Grey Knights, I go, I'm 24 away. I will shoot you. So yep. if you roll a six on your blade chant, you have a 12-inch charge. Uh, an 11-inch charge, actually. Oh, an 11. Do, do you make it? No. Okay. So I will pick up. I will come back down. I will shoot you again. I'm 24 away again. Can you make the charge? No. I, okay. I have that a lot with Death Guard, where my Plague Marines, they will disembark three, move five, and it's like, cool, my opponent was uh, 20 inches away, so I can't make the charge. Um, fortunately, though, because I have rhinos, I just sit on sit on circles, and they can't just sit 20 inches away. They do have to come and engage, and it generally, well, sometimes it'll work out in my favour. Um, zero points changes for Death Guard, none at all. So the list changes are all sort of meta-dependent rather than what's got worse or better based on points. Uh I think the answer is still Plague Marines, Predators. Do you like Maybe, the Predators? Probably still Plague Burst Crawlers. I is love the Predators. They're shout so good. for the War Dogs in there? Yeah, I know people have... Car- I like the Carnivores. I've not tried them, admittedly. But the Carnivores, OC8, move far, 14-inch move. Yeah, they're, so you know, they're pretty punchy, really good source of tank shock. Um, they don't have the run-through wall strap in as allies, which is a shame, but... I don't necessarily need it if you, 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 you can know, rapid, rapid ingress, ingress them, maybe. Yeah, and just play a play around as a counterpiece or something. Yeah, Death Guard aren't an army; they get caught on screens as well. Uh, the Plague Breen squads shoot, shoot and charge, and kill everything they hit, basically, which yeah, is clearing the space. Um, so I'm looking forward to testing them out a bit more. But I am very excited for the CSM. But that's probably the next play. Is uh, Figuring out something that isn't Renegade Raiders got to be a bit special. I feel like Night everyone's having such like a exciting time in 40k at the moment with CSM because I feel like everyone's got a CSM army but me. Everyone's got something like new and I'm here like, well, I've got Grey Knights, which I've played for four events. Eldar, which I played for about 15 before that. And Admech, that is not leaving my shelf. I'm like, <laughs> give me something new, please. Well, the next books are Sisters and GSC, and then it's sort of unknown after that. I, I reckon um, so that's no, nothing like for you in there either. Agents of the Imperium Codex. I reckon it'll be something like that mixed, and they'll has been, maybe put Death Watch into it. I've I've seen rumours of that. I have no idea what it will involve, but it could be interesting to see. I have two Inquisitors sat on the shelf, so maybe I'll become an agent of the Imperium main. I do own one of every assassin, actually. So. Uh, That's I 400 have... points right there. Almost. Maybe it's meant to be. <laughs> I have a Vindicator Assassin because I am the awful person that just reads things and he's like, yeah, let me buy it. When the Vindicator came out at the start of 10th, everyone was like, oh, he looks good. So I was like, yeah, buy it. And I'm like, I used you once and you have not left my shelf since. I don't rate them. Tur- I... He turns off saves. I've only Ooh. seen him once. I've seen him probably shoot sort of four or five times. And he's done nothing, 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 kill Trajan, nothing, nothing, nothing. Which is yeah. quite impressive, really. A really good string of shots. 
But kill, I was very, very surprised when he killed Trajan. Um, I would <laughs> say. Trajan's not Trajan, usually the sort of guy who goes down to that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm surprised yeah, he let that cow- Cowardice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously be- being a custodian's player, nothing new, but um, Cowardice Assassin Kyridrax just goes in bas- basically... Ironically, they're the first models that go into my custodians army. Just them and Trojans. I mean, the Kira Kira has just adds so much to um, custodians. I I think she's still just an auto pick. I played her in Grey Knights for a little while when she was really good. She's she's good in her own right, but what really makes her like pop off is the reroll wounds that she gets from the custodian guard. Yeah. Um, I think you can. You can make her work in like space marines with uh, assault intercessors, because then you've got it like the offensive reroll wounds against stuff that your opponent has on an objective. But space marines have other answers to those problems. Yeah, I was using them in Grey Knights when I was um, playing Canus Rex, and I had about three scoring units, so I just had to keep them alive. So I used Canus to keep it alive, Uh, not Canus Drexus to keep them alive, and it worked. Um, But Otherwise, than that, I don't think I'd use her in Grey Knights. She's the eighteen-inch lone op, effectively, yeah. doesn't she? On a two plus, on a two her shooting's quite, nice. quite good as well. Her, her shooting, shooting is her absolutely amazing. To be fair, that Most weekend I used Connor's um, Draxers. I think I rolled more ones than two pluses on Draxers, to be honest. And I was just killing my own guys, and I was just like, "Stop it, please!" Every every single time I've used Draxers, I've gone. Right, and this is in her indirect shooting. This has sustained two, and my opponent goes, "What?" Yeah, and I go, "Yeah." So from six shots, that's eight hits. Yeah, all the time. And then, so have you either of you got any events coming up? I know, I know, a couple of us are looking for. To, I've got ITT, which is the team's event at the end of the month. Um, ITT as well. Yeah, still, still un- unsure of what army I'm going to take. Uh, Death Guard CSM. It'll be all. It'll be current CSM. So undecided. I have absolutely, literally no events uh, planned at the moment. I am uh, gonna book one soon. I think I want to try and get to a couple. Um, but just I don't know. I want to see how the meta lays out a little bit before I just start taking anything. See what sort of uh, comes out. I think so. At ITT, I will. It's starting to look like I'm going to be running custodies. I won't lie, um, but maybe that's not such a bad thing. Like, obviously, in the teams format, you have the ability to dodge the bad matchups. Yeah. So, um, obviously, so when when our <laughs> opponents have a guard player who's got manticores and basilisks, I can burst into tears, and then we can not pair, pair me into them. I think that you can that's take the bully boys strap. instead. <laughs> oh yeah, great. Or the Iron Storm list. Yeah, yeah. I, I at last I ITT. I, I was obviously playing Wraith Guard and Spinners, and we got paired into some team. And there was a guy on their team playing Demons with sixty pink horrors, and um, no one wanted to play it. And it was probably my worst matchup, to be honest. Like, did you win? No, I took it. Ah. Like, I, I got seventeen to three. Like, I just, just every turn it, he was going. I am six inches away with pink horrors. I charge. No primary. Next turn. Six inches away. I charge. No primary. And I'm like, I can't kill you. And then he's like... That kind of sounds like a skill issue, if I'm honest. Oh, And then it's like the only unit that could kill him was warp spiders. And he's like, three inch deep strike with his six man flamer units. Your warp spiders are dead. And I'm like... Oh, this is yeah, that's that's the issue. Warp spiders have is if your opponent has indirect or some way of like getting round Three terrain deep, to shoot right? them, yeah. they'll just die. Oh, they they just die really badly. Yeah, I, I, I in fact I also played demons into demons with thirty plus pink horrors at ITC. Similar experience because I had tyranids. So whilst I could screen everything, I could do no damage. I had nothing that would kill pink horrors. Uh, I shoot with an exocrine, and then there's instead of there being ten, there's now sixteen on that objective. Yeah, it's, it's an awful scenario for me. They don't um, do anything but just stop your primary and make you miserable. That's that's what yeah. they do. Yeah, they've got one of those things where you, you really have to kill 
the entire squad all at once. Otherwise, you can have a really bad. Yeah, I feel like there'd definitely be armies that can like absolutely mess it up. Like I reckon Jakari would mess it up because Lilith would wipe a unit. Um, uh, what's their names? Uh, Incubi would wipe a unit. Like there's lots of things in Jakari that would just wipe the units, and then they just get back in a transport and do it again next turn. Like, yeah, but, I think CSM loads yeah. of damage, loads of. Legionnaires with chainsaws, Lucius. Yeah, like there's a lot a of things that do it, but then there's some things where you go, I'm not killing that. And they are, if I try kill it, they're just going to split and become more annoying. Like, yes. I, I literally ringed off an objective with Wraith Guard and was like, okay, maybe this might be my objective for a turn. Six inch charge. Right, he's made it. Okay, he, he can only get three on the objective. It's still mine. Okay, I've killed four pink horrors. He splits inside my ring onto the center of the objective, and I'm like, "What's the point? Like, I just can't do anything." Like, it was like I, I tried to block it, I couldn't. You made the classic That's mistake of trying play. to play the game. <laughs> that I, I love that. That's so big brain. Like, I literally circled it. He's like, "Yeah, I'll charge a wraith guard." Oh yeah, like four pinks have died. Yeah, I've got six models back. They'll just go in the middle of the circle. I was like, oh god, it's what a, is this? It's a weird one for custodies because I think a, a full size squad of custodies will kill the pink horrors quite comfortably. Um, but if you start taking losses suddenly, that doesn't look quite so sure. To be fair, I don't think they would a be able to kill like any custodies, to be honest with you. Like, their shooting's pretty, they have shooting and their melee's non existent. It's so non existent. Like, we had, just we had some armies. Kairos back. and the bird. We had some up. armies that could have had good matchups into it. Like we had Chaos Knights, and I was thinking, well, you might not kill a unit in one, but six Chaos Knights will probably bring down a whole unit, even if they split. And you just go, here's three knights on an objective. You ain't out OC in me. Speaking, no, speaking my, of the my new team Chaos Space book, play. actually, I reckon Havocs are probably quite good at killing horrors. You like Havocs, don't you? I'm a big fan of Havocs. I think they're really cool. And you show everyone your point. loadout for your Havocs. There we go. The, Havoc, uh, the Havoc chain champion. Cannon Havocs. I, I think the problem is they are probably three damage short of killing the squad. I Because they get 20 something hits. I reckon they get 17 or 18 wounds. And I the average. Yeah, I just, to, get, I, to get 10, you have to te fail 10 four up saves, you need to do 20. Wounds. Yeah, and it's twenty one. I reckon they're they just can a bit short. One. Like, I just, well, uh, they in, can play reroll ones to save on yeah. invuns as well. I don't get why they have to four up invun. Like, it's really just because, because there's each, all the zinch stuff is a four up invun. Back like back in ninth, all the zinch stuff had a better demon save at range than it yeah, did it was melee. three up, wasn't it? And then five up in combat. Yeah. Oh, that guy was so, so annoying in ninth. Yeah, I got the. Big, but he had uh, the three up in one, and then he had the it ranged, and he could blank a save as well, couldn't he? Or something. Yeah, like that. I, well, I never, I never played with him. I played against him enough, and that was awful. But, um, even even now, he's fantastic. Sit next to Bellacore, he just shoots. The only reason why I enjoyed playing against demons in ninth was one simple stratagem in the Admech book. Auto wounding on fours to hit with a unit that has 60 shots. Here's 30 saves on your board. Absolutely. Board. Absolutely horrible. I no, remember no every time to that. I played a demon player, they just looked at me in horror because I every Admech list I took had 60 Vanguard. So I'd go. It's, it's a non-vehicle, right? Yeah, non-vehicle. So I'd go. Oh, one CP on a four plus. I auto wound to hit. Yeah, there's um like thirty five wounds because I had reroll ones and they're like, yeah, Bellacore's dead. And it's yep. just it, it was, was enough. It was enough to kill Mortarian pretty much. Bellacore was like almost. minus one to hit, minus one to wound, and you couldn't reroll against him. Like, he was really annoying he's, in ninth. Something like that. Or maybe minus one to hit, minus one damage, I think. Yeah. Like, he was actually really annoying to kill. And I'd just go, yeah, take 35 saves, mate. And then he would just so, die. Only only so many four pluses you can actually make. Yeah. Uh, so you talk about past events. Have you guys been to any events recently? So I went to... Um just before the date slate dropped and just before the custodies codex dropped i went to hellstorm wargaming um 
and I I got absolutely pummeled. I was not in top form. Um, just to give you some an idea of how it went, my first game was into uh, Imperial Guard, which is almost an auto loss for Custodes because they they just throw bodies into the midboard to stop you getting close to their tanks and then shoot you really 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 hard and they slow you down with uh, and they no, slow you uh, down basilisk um, yeah they're that's bad i had my blade champion was from the turn that he start got on the table he was basilisk every single turn <laughs> i was like well i could advance in charge but base move 4 minus 2 to my advance roll it's it's not great <laughs> Yeah, I remember great before odds. they changed my spinners when it was like, you just, you can't advance, mate. You got advance and charge. Nah, mate, you can't advance. The one time I beat Eldar um, this edition against Night Spinners, I went, it was um, Search and Destroy. So the corners in Search and Destroy are closer than 18 inches. I can't remember what the, what exactly it is, but my, my game plan in that game was go first and turn one charge my Blade Champion. And I did it. I actually did it. <laughs> Do they not, uh, the, not have the CP to Phantasm, or they just, just not move far enough? I I think he forgot about Phantasm because he didn't expect me to be in his face turn one. Um, was he an Eldar player, or did he? He just was an Eldar player. Um, I killed Fuegan in indirect shooting, and he didn't get back up. Oh! And then I I stood in front of his Wraith guard, popped the minus one damage, the four feel no pain. I was like, try and kill me. Before the game, my opponent said, "Oh yeah, you're advancing charge. He's not going to advance and charge." I was like, "Well, he might. No, he's not going to. But if I go first, and then I went first, six. I managed to roll a six-inch advanced, advance and charge. I was like, I'm here now. Deal with it." How do you forget to phantasm? I just it's, in, uh, in his defense, clearly a skill issue. My opponent had had a couple of drinks by that point. I feel like I phantasm now just for the sake of phantasm and even if I don't need to, just just because I can. And it, it's always it's a one. It's such well, a with the way leaper, you always have the CP anyway. It's always it's a one. Best character now, in the though. game. Like it's always a one. I don't think I've ever rolled like higher. Like the only time I've rolled like a five or a six is like when I don't need it. And it's like, oh yeah, it's an inch to get behind this wall here. Yeah, have a six, mate. Cheers. Well, the walls on UKTC are either three or six millimeters. So actually, you always need a two to get behind the wall if you're in front of it. So uh, don't anyone try to cheat you out of that. It's, oh, uh, if they roll a one and they're on front of the they're wall, they're not they getting away. Get behind it. They don't get away. They shuffle. Um, yeah, no, we were at the uh, Saffron Slam a couple weekends ago. Yeah, uh, I didn't didn't compete very hard. I was uh, done after two games, but you know, I know you did quite well there, didn't you, Ali? Uh, yeah, I I came third, I think, and I only lost to the winner. So yeah, it was a good result in the end. I uh, any any standout games? Um, game one and so game one, I I I played it, and um, it was against a guy called Reg. He's a lovely guy, and um. He was using like six dreads, three armagers, and it was quite a lot of like tanks. And I didn't have too much anti-tank. I had haywire bikes, but he was playing the um, the Space Marine detachment. That's minus one to hit, and like that wouldn't normally like be that bad for most people. But Eldar hitting on fours, like it wasn't great. Like turn one and two, I didn't kill anything, and then turn three, I went, yeah, there's three dead redemptors and two dead armagers. Because I I done one two turns of just going yeah here's six damage four damage and everything was on like five or six wounds and then turn five I just went yeah pick your whole army up mate and then like yeah it, it went well after that um, round two I think I played the guy you lost to round one with the black templars and yep. Yep. I literally got I very got similar turn. list wasn't it yeah another uh, redemptor spam list. But this time I went a little bit different. I went, here's um, five Hawks next turn. Here's five Hawks. Yeah, you haven't left your deployment zone and it's turn four. Um, 
it just yeah i i went yeah i'm just not gonna even bother killing you i'm just gonna go yeah you can't leave your deployment zone you can't leave you're not leaving and i just sat lone ops on objectives while doing that because it was uh the mission where you empower objectives with characters so i was just like yeah, of power yeah yeah so i was just like yeah characters lone up you can't get to them and it, it worked well uh, and then round three is when I lost to Luke, who won. For, and um, it was a really good game, to be fair. And it was really close. And uh, turn three, uh, he basically, he deep struck a Bloodthirster to kill some Haywire bikes. And I was just, I put the Haywire bikes out as bait because they do nothing into demons. Um, like, so I done that and the Bloodthirster killed them, which I expected. And then I shot two D cannons, uh, a Fugan, the Way Leaper, all the Harley Quinns you've rain into it, grenades there, and it was on three wounds. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I'll charge you've rain them eleven Harley Quinns into it to finish it. So I that, charged that, them that did in. It, right? That, no, they, they you've rain. So first. you've rain. You've rain done a, a dev wound. So it was down to one. And then out of forty five attacks from the Harley Quinns, I done four wounds. And he rolled four four pluses and killed eight in return on the hit back. And I was just Ooh. there like Well, I was gonna ask it's what there. you think you could have done differently to win that game, but I think it's quite clear it is just kill a bloodthirster. I mean I set up like that after I'd done that, uh, if he wanted to deep strike, it would have had to been far back, so I would have kept my primary. But because he's blood first first that survived, he just fell back onto my objective that I had one loan up on, and he's like, Yeah, I just out OC you. I'm just like, nice. So now I don't get primary because that didn't happen. And then at that point, I sort of lost my head and I sent five warp spiders, five hawks to kill three nurglings at the back of the board and dis disband my screen for some reason. I just lost my head. And then Bellacor turned up, six blood crushers turned up in my deployment zone. And yeah, I got zero primary on the last turn. And I think I lost like 81 to 72 in the end. So it was still a close game, but I, I, I just lost my head in the last couple of turns after that happened. Some, to be fair, like, something like that can rattle you. Oh, it, it rattled me. I was just sat there like, what has happened? Like, in the last how? Game, in the last game of um, Hellstorm, I played against um, one of our players. Oh, I'm struggling with the name, but he, he was running out back. Jack Doddy, there you go. He, he had his, his Rat Mac army. Um, and what we, we were playing on one of the GW layouts, and it's a really bad layout if you want to shoot things, because it has four big ruins, and they're all like that in the center, with a big space in the middle where you can hold the objectives. But the thing that you can do if you're a melee army is you run into the middle, sit in that what is essentially a magic box, <laughs> um, hide behind the walls, and you, you just can't be shot. Because your opponent has to step into the terrain to 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 be able to shoot you, but then he has to get the t to the terrain. And if he tries to get close enough to shoot and charge, in your turn, you're just going to be able to run forward and pick things up. Um, I had two squads in that box, and I I sensed an opportunity to um, just completely break his army, kill two two full squads of. Um, the Catafron Breachers, because um, I, had, I had two full strength Custodes units. So even if I didn't kill them, I was going to cripple them and essentially take them out of the game. Uh, ran up, got overwatched by one squad, lost a couple of Custodes, but I was like, I've still got enough to do what I need to do. And I failed all of my charges in that turn. <laughs> so instead of making my opponent pick up somewhere in the region of eight to ten breaches i now had about 600 points worth of custodies just get sat right in breaches. front of him. <laughs> the worst thing is um, breaches are damage free in combat as well so there's no escape yep. in it um needless to say that rattled me um yeah. there there might have been something i could do to end up winning that game but it's like, like you say, you, when you when your headspace is just, it's just yeah. completely off. Yeah, it was something like that. It just throws you off, and then your last turns, you think you're behind, but you're not. Like after that happened, I think I was still ahead on the score, but I just, 
I let it get to me. I, I, I'd i made two silly mistakes and then Luke's a good player. He capitalised and, yeah, I ended up losing because of it. So there's definitely things I could have done different in the game. But, I mean, on average, I should have killed the blood first star, but that wasn't the like the reason I lost the game. It was it was more down to me just, like, losing my head after that because, um, yeah, that was uh, very under average from them. Yeah. Uh... What about yeah, you, Jack? I, I, what, what events have you been to where you've just had a moment that's rattled you in a game? So, uh, most recently, the, the event I've fin- the most recent event I finished was the South Coast Super Major, which was a couple months ago at this point. Um, I actually go four one, coming fifteenth, which is quite nice. Um, and my last two games, I won both by a point. Oh, just very, very, you know, a lot of it was can I roll six inch advances turns four and five? And I got them. So I got my secondary points, which is very lucky. But um, I played guard battle round four, uh, round four of uh, South Coast and uh, only a couple indirect pieces, which was like nice for me to see because they would just pick up. There was no man's cause at all. It was just basilisks because uh, the man's cause would just pick up my rhinos, leave the playing rings in the open. They would just yeah. disappear. So not seeing those was great. He had a Rogal Dawn, two tank, uh, two tank commanders, four, five sentinels, three of them being armored sentinels. Um, I think I made a mistake going minus one weapon skill, ballistic skill. I should have gone minus one save because I didn't realize yeah. how much two plus he had in his army. Didn't matter too much though. I killed 150 points the entire game. Um, and that was it. All I killed. Um, turn one. You kill any I got tanks? First. None. I did zero wounds to his wow. tanks. Wow. Uh, turn one, I moved Mortarian uh, 18 inches up the board, 17 inches. Um, have him on the edge of his opponent, my opponent's deployment zone. Eat several Laz cannons, uh, roll underwhelming on the saves, left on sort of nine wounds. And I'm like, okay, mm. we're in a good we're not in a bad spot. Everything else is set up untouched, which is quite nice. Um Mortarian goes in, kills a scout sentinel, uh f- flips an objective from the one guy that's towed onto it because I've got OC4. Um but I wasn't paying attention and left my wing poking out and in his turn the Rogal Dawn sees the wing and just one shot Mortarian with the main gun. He declares all the guns into him and just kills him with the main gun, which was not a great place for me to be. I was sort of hoping I could survive that in the tank commander. Um, that wasn't wasn't great. And that was, yeah, it was, uh, I felt like I was on the back foot the entire time from that moment. A, a um, big loss like that can really like tilt put you, you in the wrong frame of mind for a game, especially so yeah. early on. Yeah. I was, um, I was relying on Mortarian's aura of ignore modifiers to buff the plague marines I'd managed to get nearby him that were about to fight some Bulgren. Um, that would have been really so useful. Yeah, losing Mortarian meant that I sat in combat with these Bulgren, didn't do very much damage because my two damage melee, which is the heavy hitter, was now yep. one damage. Yeah, and my plague marines were getting whittled away a lot faster than I could hold him, but it did allow me to pin him back just for long enough that I could sit on my two objectives, my three objectives even, get my cleanse, get my deploy, and just farm the points. And I managed to win because he didn't burn an objective turn four. And had he done that, he would have got it. And he had the capacity to do so. He just decided to do other things, thinking he could burn turn five. You took (laughs) the win, having only killed 150 points of his army. I killed... Two scout sentinels, one sentinel from the squad of three, and five scions. And did it all and come back? I killed, I killed two halves of the Bulgrin squads as well, but still they're full squads. They're still a squad of four and a squad of three, so they're still existing on the table. Um, no, the only thing that came problem. back was the scions, actually. Uh, Everything else sort of yeah, when it died, it died. In a so game it, where like something goes wrong. just really good objective draws? Uh, so I was on cleanse and deploy, and it was a f- six objective mission. Oh yeah. Um, with the middle two objectives where they've obviously pulled apart, and one of it it's behind cover. Yeah. So we would have rhino towing onto it, cleansing. Plague marines on the other one, cleansing. Nerglings in the middle, deploying. I managed to get a deploy in his deployment zone at least once, maybe even twice, and just sort of farm the CP. Uh, 
far farm the uh secondary points to just keep me in the game and um just turns four and five uh, he was out ocing me so i was like right i need to advance a predator to get me oc4 on this objective so i out oc his sentinels and if i get the five on the advance i'll do that so it means the nerglings can shuffle over and cleanse because the rhino is now off the objective doing a deploy tagged in combat sort of thing it was just 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 lucky dice that got me there but yeah i was i I committed to the fact i'd lost and just yeah i managed to keep my head just enough to sort of throw everything out but i lost like seven plague greens to one to two basilisks which wasn't good yeah i think death guard are in that like spot like where they they, t- they take cleanse and homers and they go, I'm going to sit here, cleanse homer all game. I'm going to score roughly 80 to 90 points. Can you stop me? No. Okay, I win. Yes. Okay, I lose. I can't do much about that. But I feel like that's the spot they're in. That's why they're doing a lot of like four ones and stuff at the moment because of the um, sort of play style of it. Because I think most Death Guard players are taking cleanse and homers um, and just, doing yeah. that because they just go the rhino they'll chuck five plague marines out a turn on the other one or something and then some nerglings in deep strike or some in the center and if you can like some armies can really struggle into dealing with that because you have fights first and stuff like that and rhinos to block people just absolutely wiping you off the board but if people can deal with that then i i feel like death guard just can't do anything like they don't have no tricks if you can get past that cleanse and homers thing yeah, if you, for example, get the first drop and you have infiltrators, if you can stop my nerglings going in the middle, if you Space Marine's really good at it, two units of scouts, just drop one yeah. in the middle, stop my nerglings getting there, drop one on my home objective, or like you string one out on my home objective, you go first, you scout forwards, I don't need my deployment zone, you know. Yeah, like when I played Death Guard I, at Saffron final round, and obviously... Uh, he didn't go cleanse and homers to be fair because I think he knew I could stop the play of it because like I had D cannons so I literally just go you can sit with your rhinos I'll kill them and then I'll kill the plague marines on the following turn because I have the movement to get to where the plague marines are so it was it was like he took he took tactical and he like made made a push on turn one like turn one because I think he he pretty much knew he had to get me off primary early to beat me because I'd win the secondary game and um when he pushed me early i just i full sent and i killed like a pcb uh, a drone 10 plague marines two characters and a rhino in a turn and then that's like quite a lot of damage on turn two going that and that was going into his turn two so on his turn two he had lost that much already i feel death guard can struggle with armies that can deal with transports quite well Mm. Obviously, yeah, they're um, very mechanized at the moment. Custodians that historically either. have struggled with transports because you, you kill the transport and then whatever's in it, it just gets out and then in their turn kills, kills you. you. Um, which I think why you see a lot of people going for the um, Caladius tanks because they probably one of the best anti so vehicle killers in the entire game, I'd say. Yes. Hundred percent. And they are still really good. They've lost nothing going into the new book. Like they lost, lost a fourth campaign. Didn't didn't go up in points. Um, they just got such a good profile. Um, yeah. But if you yeah if you, you can kill that vehicle and then lay into what's inside, you're gonna have a really good time into Death Guard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that was that was always the problem I found was. Um, uh, one of the other problems I found was sort of a distinct lack of anti-tank. You have grenades, you have entropy cannons, you can get las cannons on your predators. The minus one toughness helps a lot and lots of lethal hits. Plague Marines are just T5 Space Marines, though. Yeah, they, it's just getting there, isn't they, it? It's a Plague yeah, Marine yeah. with the main damage. It's like at Saffron when you played Ollie first round with that many dreads, impulses, everything. That's like a that nightmare was... matchup for you, like... I got very lucky that he didn't kill one rhino, and then extremely unlucky that he one shot the other rhino. Um, and uh, I deployed one knowing it was in the open, sort of praying I was going to go first. The other one was uh, probably just a bit too on the line. We, it was, you know, a coin flip if he could see it or not from his position. Um, so we said, yeah, he could, and just maybe got it. I, I did have all my plague marines going into the next turn. 
that was my turn one of the dreads is still 25 inches away or something yeah, just never um, getting there. 36 on those melt on the uh plasma cans i not getting there <laughs> i by the time we called it end of three i had killed half of his dreadnoughts um it just wasn't fast enough it was uh they had killed you I was, by the time you had yes I, w- I had no plague greens left i had my predators are only AP one into his dreadnoughts. AP two if he's in contagion range, which he can avoid because he's firestorm. So he's got advance and shoot. He obviously yeah. wants to be close to trigger his plus one strength, but but he yeah. doesn't need to get close as the thing. Yeah, because he would just need two anyway. Well, freeze, but Redemptors pick plague marines up quite well. Yeah, yeah, they're they're nasty. They uh those the D six plus one plus blast. Strength ten well, like, when he's close is really really good. It made yeah. a huge difference uh, when it, he was they don't eleven point nine inches away. They don't have the most impressive defensive profile, really. Like no, they've taken a huge hit in terms of durability compared to some of their other iterations. But they're like, quite good into like Death Guard because Death Guard just have no range like kill, killing power. Like you have like Predators, but if he's in cover AOCs, he's got a free up save against your Las Cannons like. Because yeah. he's going to be outside contagion range, so wow, he's got free up, and then he CP rerolls one that goes through. You do uh, nothing. At the last was, team um, event we went to, I played a um, Space Marines player. Um, I shot a land raider with one of my Caladius tanks. Um, he was in cover. He used the smoke stratagem to make me minus one to hit, and he used armor of contempt. So Caladius tanks AP three. So he was saving on uh, threes, effectively. Um, and my first Caladius tank one shot a Land Raider. <laughs> I think I. So it's four shots, obviously, with lethal hits and twin linked. I think I got four, three or four wounds through somehow. And he just, he just failed all his saves. He rolled only ones and twos. Um, and at that he was like, "That's a bad start to the game." I remember I played uh, Connor um, the night before LGT. We were both using our LGT lists, and he was running Black Templars, and I was running Eldar. And I had one War Walker that could see a Redemptor. He popped AOC, so he had a free up save. Failed both, re-rolled one, failed it again. I rolled the first one, rolled like a, a five on damage, so it was six. And then I went, yeah, here's a six on a fake dice. Yeah, pick that Redemptor up. And Connor was just looking at me like, I hate you. <laughs> I uh, I really enjoy killing Redemptors. I, um, I, one of my, the first event I went to in July last year, first event of 10th, that is, I had two obliterators, four, a squad of four obliterators undivided, drop in, spend a CP, four hit and wound rerolls, split fire, killed two redemptors with four oh. obliterators. Oh. I just, just the dice absolutely came through. I'm, uh, I'm very sad they've nerfed obliterators in the book, but I can talk about another time. Um, so going into the next three months, the new date slate, new books, what are you guys most excited for? I think I'm excited to get some care space screens on the table. Um, I've been a custodies main since LGT 2021. Um, so it, it's, it's been a lot of the same play style. Um, and I'm, I'm just excited to, to switch it up. It's going to be a new experience for basically everyone. Cause it's a new book. Um, I'm expecting a degree of hobby lag from a lot of people. So, the fact that I'm a slow painter anyway will feel like less of a uh, a thing because I'm, I'm getting myself a head start. Um, and it's looking like a really fun book to play, to be honest. There's obviously eight attachments and they all look fun and the majority of them look good as well. It, and there's it, an it, index it, as well coming too. For and children. children as well for yeah. children's it looks good for DSM print. at the moment it yeah i've got a feeling this is going to be like the year of chaos <laughs> i say that every year it'll be the it'll be the next six months of chaos and then january dates they will come along and just Pick shove them in the in shins in. yeah I mean, just like last time. have had their shine already and to to be fair 
because um, Chaos Space Marines have been good for a long time. Not like Eldar good, but but good. I don't know. Um, well, sorry. Eldar at the start of the edition. Good. Oh, no. Nothing's been that good ever. Nothing. Has, no. No. But they've been consistently good. And they're looking like they're going to be good carrying on with the Codex. So it's yeah, a good they, time. They CSM. do look good. Oh. And what I've heard the most thing like about CSM players say to me is it looks fun most of all. Like As well as it's good, it looks really fun, like apparently, to play. So... And yes, I, I think... um, that's definitely why I think I, you know, speaking to other people is I'm looking at this detachment. Well, I'm looking at this detachment with a different unit combination. So, oh, you know, it wouldn't work in this one. But what well, if you try it over here with this enhancement? You know, there's so much you can do now in the book. And it's not just going to be three Chaos Lords, three Chosen, two Forge Fiends, four Obliterators or eight Obliterators or two units of a Curse Cultist. I think. You'll see legionnaires. You'll see predators. You'll see vindicators. You'll see maybe Mauler fiends. You might see Vashtor if you're lucky. Maybe Terminators with the feel no pain, like Lord maybe of Skulls. Terminators with the feel no pain. Yep. You'll see lots of night lords, even defilers. Don't go too. I, I, lots of night I lords. Think no dread talents. to be the book that puts defilers on the table. Don't go too far. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Maybe in a Warhammer World event, I don't think you'll see them at uh, UKTC because they do not move past those walls. Yeah, they don't. They don't. They don't they, uh... Well, they move through the walls. That's what they do. <laughs> they move eight inches through a wall and then they fail their charge and die. Do they even clear their base through the wall. I don't um, think they even well, have they a move base. If they start up against the wall, they can finish on the other side of it. Um, oh. I don't know if you specifies they need to be on the base. I know some events do, but that base is huge. It's yeah. 160 mil disc. It's is it the same base size as a um, great unclean one, or is it bigger? I think it might be bigger. I think it's 160, whereas um, the Admech tank, the cruel, the Dune crawler, is well, 130 mil. So it's yeah. even it's bigger indication than that. of where Jesus. things are going. The Defile is currently out of stock. <laughs> Okay, Defile Meta is coming. Oh, God. <laughs> and then, uh, what about you, Harley? Anything you're looking forward to for the next three months or not looking forward to? I mean, I d I, to be honest, there's, I don't think there's any books coming out that are useful to me. So it's it's plain old Grey Knights, Elder, and Admech for me. I'm just really looking to the next slate, to be honest, when Admech actually gets some rule changes. That's what I'm waiting for. Because Admech aren't going to be good till they actually get some rule changes because you can drop them in points all you want. And they, they've become good if you drop their points to a point like where you can have a thousand of them. But that's just not fun. Like I I want to have some no. good rules to play with. Like there there is play, but I just I don't I don't think it's great. Like so I'll probably stick with Grey Knights, I think, because Grey Knights are cool and they're quite fun to play, so and uh, stick with Drago, Drago will be feasting well if we see a lot of uh, Soul Forged packed. Where you know, Bring me your demon engines. engines. <laughs> Drago shoots one, charges the other, kills both, you know. Oh, oh Dra Drago will love CSM if Sh they become shoots a thing. Shoots one, charges another, has killed three demon engines. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And more terror do as well. And more terror as he's going past, yeah. yeah. And then he he's goes a, back into the on war. the other table. Yeah, he 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 will be good into him just for the fact he he just goes yeah here's a six inch charge I'm guaranteed to get you. Well, yes, I don't I don't I've know the amount of six inch re rolls, the amount of six inch re rollable charges Drago fouls is not funny. It's just it sounds like you feel bad. Dice. Is uh... and what yeah, about man. yourself? Um. Yeah, I've CSM. I've got a, quite a large army. I've got the new box ordered. Got the Jump Lord. Got ten Raptors. Uh, so I'm ready, not for everything. Uh, ready for most things. I'm ready to use my Night Lords Warp Talons. Not as Dread Talons though, because I don't think Battle Shock's good. Although three inch Deep Strike can't can't go wrong. Um, I, I was thinking with a three inch Deep Strike, how, how expensive are um, Raptors? They're 85 points and carry two melter guns or 170 points and carry four melter guns or plasma guns. Surely there's some potential uh, deploy teleport homers there. With a yeah. three-inch deep strike, you, your opponent's going to struggle to keep you out your, your, their deployment. 
Yeah, you could definitely bring two squads and do that. Make that work. Yeah, great. You could, do it. With warp talents having a built in uppy downy now, you could bring three squads of five warp talents, a squad or two of raptors, and then as as and as and when you need uppy downy units to grab it. No. Well, hear, hear me there's out. There's a lot of play. There. 30 warp talents. <laughs> No, I don't think anyone will ever own thirty warp talents. They are some of the most painful models to paint. They have trim. They have trim with it between the trim. Their wings have trim. It's just difficult. I've done ten. I've got another ten coming. That's enough for me. Yeah, the thing about Eldar, Admech, and Grey Knights, none of it actually has that much trim. I, I haven't felt the pain of trim yet. Well, well I've I've when, had start painting trim with this smaller fiend and it might be one of the worst experiences of my life <laughs> it's no. an acquired taste i i don't think i would ever start um another army that has trim except I for maybe would not children. go near thousand sons i will tell you that that, that trim looks awful yeah thousand sons of world eaters both off the table for me i'm uh perfectly happy doing night lords that's enough I add Death Guard as well, I suppose. They have a lot of trim on the shoulder pads as well. I mean, it's yeah. looking bright for the future of all of us, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of lot for us to be looking forward to. Uh, I mean, we're already already two, three weeks in, so new data slates. Oh, the the next data slate's only two and a half months away at yeah. worst. You know, it's... And that's where the rule changes come. But... And that will be rule changes. That will be csm being put back in their place after getting out the naughty box for a whole six weeks and that's yeah. when they give admex six planes again admex six planes csm yep. being nerfed or soul planes Pad again on the rise oh yeah <laughs> eldar planes orcs are going to get better definitely <laughs> oh, God. we'll see what the uh, rules team switch to because uh, that, that might be an indication of what's going to stay good I mean, it could still be 18 wraiths. I'm still terrified. Just see what Josh Roberts starts taking to events. Just copy his list. Uh, that's not, that is not advice. Do not co just copy lists. Unless you really, really want to. Or you're good at the game. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you all for joining us for the first episode of The, the Table. And we hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye. See ya.